Hi there, once again welcome to Adiotech. In this tutorial, I'm going to show you everything you need to know in order to start analyzing data using SPSS. So I'm going to start from scratch. So I'm going to assume you don't know anything about SPSS. Remember, you need to subscribe to this channel and don't forget to turn on the notification bell in order to get updates anytime we upload a new video. So what I'm going to do is that I'm going to show you the theory aspect and then we'll do some few practicals using SPSS. So without much ado, let's jump straight into action. So SPSS, we're going to look at the introduction of SPSS. And our main objective is to know what SPSS is and what it can be used for. We also like the two views in SPSS. We're going to look at the two main views in SPSS. That's the data view and then the variable view. We also look at the two main windows in SPSS. That's the data editor and then output viewer. We're also going to look at the menu options available in SPSS. And then we'll do some bit of analysis. Analysis, okay. So what is SPSS? According to spsstutorial.com, SPSS means statistical package for the social sciences. And what first launched in 1968, and since SPSS was acquired by IBM in 2009, it officially was known to be IBM SPSS. But most people just call it as simple as SPSS. Okay, so that is what you need to know about SPSS. So we can use it to do our data analysis and all that. So what are the main features? SPSS is just a software for editing, analyzing all sorts of data. So what are some of the data you can easily analyze using SPSS? So SPSS can open all files format that are commonly used for structured data, such as, so we have the spreadsheet that's Excel file from Excel. We also have the plain text, that's a text file S, C, CSV files. We have, we have relational database, that's SQL, that's structured query languages. We have files from that that can be opened in there. We also have the SAS files as well. So those files can all be opened through what? SPSS. So, like I said, we need to look at the data view and we also look at the variable view. Those are the most important things we know. When you are able to understand those components, you know how to create variables and then do analysis. So, we have the data view. Mostly, the data view display your values. So, the values are going to enter into your source. That is where it will be displayed. Okay, it will display within your data view. We'll start a practical aspect and we'll see how this is going to work for us. Okay. And then we have the variable view. So mostly the variable shows, the variable view mostly shows the metadata associated with a particular record. So we have variables that will be created and I'll show you some of the rules regarding the creating of, creation of variables. Okay. So we're going to look at that. So if I say metadata, metadata is basically information about the meaning of variables. So we have a variable and then we create meaning to that. So we're going to do all that within this tutorial. And one of the most important is after I enter all this record, all you need to do next is to be able to analyze this data. Okay. So we have the menu for analyzing data and the process is basically as simple as following going to the, the analyze menu, going to descriptive statistics and then also have the descriptives. So it depends on what exactly you want to do and then the type of analysis you want to draw from your data. So we are going to look at everything as we go through this tutorial. Okay, so once you go through the analysis view, you get a pop-up or let me call it a dialog box. That dialog box will display and give you option in which you have to select your data that you want to run the analysis on. So I'll take you through everything step by step. Remember to watch this video to the end and see how best we can pick a questionnaire, how we can create our code book, and then we'll be able to run our analysis. Okay, then we have the SPSS output window, which is the most important. And that is where you get your report. After you're able to analyze your data, you'll be able to get your report and you can view that through the output window. And we are about to start the main practical aspects. So you can import your data and then analyze it. But you can also enter your data manually. 
and that is what we're going to do in this tutorial so in this one tutorial just one video just in one video i want to show you everything you need to know in order to analyze your data using SPSS. okay so we're going to look at the first step to enter data manually so the first thing you need to do is to number your questionnaire so your questionnaire need to have number associated with them so you have question one question two in that order then you need to create a code book i'm going to explain how to create a code book i'll take you through the process we have to define your variables in spss like i said within the variable view we have to create our variables over there and there are process in creating that variable and then you input your data once all is done you can go ahead to input your data so we're going to start our practical aspect of this tutorial and see okay so welcome to the main practical aspect of SPSS okay we are going to actually do a lot of practicals here and we'll see how best we can use this question here to do some practical so stay tuned and enjoy this tutorial so I have some sample questionnaires and I have my SPSS remember anytime you want to USB just Go to your search button once you install spss just go and then just type it and then you click to launch your spss okay when you launch your spss you have this is the interface you're going to get you get this nice looking interface which looks similar to excel okay so this is the interface we have and i have a sample questionnaire which we are going to use to do all our practical lessons in this particular tutorial okay so I'm going to take you through the interface of the SPSS first, then I will do our questionnaires analysis. Okay, so this is the interface, and we have what we call the data view. So this is the data view. Any data or values we enter will be displayed over here. Okay, so let's assume I go to variable option and I type in let's say name and the type. So a name is basically going to be a string. We're going to do that so I can easily change this to a string and I can specify the number of characters I will accept. So this and maybe assume I want just a full name. If I want the full name of the person, then I may give him more characters. But if I want just the first name of the person, I may put my character as just around 10. Okay. So the width and the decimal, mostly the decimal depend if you want to enter some relation to currency, you're going to be the salary of the person. It basically mean have decimal places. So we have label. So maybe the label could be maybe the name. So you can say full name. In that order and the value we'll talk about values later on a very important at some point we need to add value so this is the variable view i've just created a variable remember if you want to create a variable there should be space if you want to create a, a variable with space this is actually not going to work because variable name contains an illegal character so variable name cannot contain a space you can join that with an underscore and we're going to do everything in practical so we are just looking at the interface and this is the variable view I've just created my first okay so we have what we call the columns these are the columns so we have the name column we have the type we have the width decimal so these are columns the vertical ones are the columns and the horizontal ones are the row and basically and these ones are mainly made up of records individual records so this we have individual records will be within the row okay so within the variable view do that and then once you move straight to the data view you see that the variable i created over here is popping up over the name so this way i can display my records now so i can enter my name because i want my name over here and this has been entered neatly so we have one variable created it to show at the data view and then you are good to go okay so i'm going to delete everything so let me just clear this data and we'll do uh, practical one so we have the views like i said the two main views the data view then we have the files option after you're done you want to import you want to start a new project you go to the file option and then you open your file okay so when you have the data you want to you want to work with your data just go to the new option and then you jump straight to what data and if you have a file existing file you want to open you can use the open option to do that and you can also import import any type of data like i said you can see from the list over here we have import data and we have databases so we have new query we have excel then we have csv data text data 
SARS, and then the rest. So these are some of the data you can easily import, and then also you can equally export data as well. Okay, so you can export data into database Excel, and then the rest. So you can rename your data set and every other things you want to do. You can do it within the file column. So you can just follow the procedure and just do it as you want. We have the edit column. So within the edit column, you have the undo, redo. You can copy and then paste and everything that you want to do. You can do that. Within the edit column, we also have the view column. This regarding your views. You can easily change your view. You can see my grid lines. These are the grid lines over here. If I don't want to show my grid lines, I can easily do that at the view column. I can just uncheck this. You can see that my workspace is now without a grid line. Okay, so you can equally do that at the view column. I want my grid line, which is very important, and I can set that. And we have switching between variables, names, and this. I will explain this later on, but I will go into an uncheck. I will just I will uncheck this for now. And then we have the data view. So data view is also the once we start, we'll look at how we can easily use some of this menu. The most important thing maybe we're going to be talking about would be at the analyze menu. So within the analysis option here, we can easily do our analysis. Once we enter our data, we'll be able to do those analysis over here. So we come down here and we have descriptive and then we come to descriptive statistics and we come to descriptive. So we're doing most of our analysis here. When we get here, we can equally do that. Then we have the graph option, okay? So if you intend to just draw a graph, you can easily use this column to do that. And there are other options, but we have the utilities. So within the utilities, you can easily get meaning to your variable. So I've created name over here. When I click on that utility, you see a variable here and giving details about that particular variable. And there are other extensions that maybe if you download, you should be able to use. And the Windows options allow you to switch between uh, your various views. So right now, I have just one Windows open. I can switch between separate windows okay so basically this is a brief introduction to the interface of SPSS okay so let's try and then now do a bit of practicals here in this tutorial so I have my variable view and then the data view and through my presentation I may mention of numbering your questionnaire so you need to be able to number your questionnaires before Starts and my questionnaires I have over here as the number. So I have question one. I have question one in order in that order. So the next thing to do is what to call the code book. We need to create a code book. So mostly this is going to be analyzed, let's say using quantitative. So these are going to be in figures. We need to use figures to represent most of our values, okay? Or let's say all our values. Before we present any value, it will be analyzing using figures. So we need to create a code book. So I'm going to show you how to create a code book, okay? So this is a typical example. Create a code book and once we have this question here. So the code book basically means that I have one. I have female and then a male. I cannot enter exactly that within my Excel, my SPSS file. I can, within my entries, I can't just enter a male or female. So you have to create a code for that. So I can easily use, let's say one to represent a male, a female, and then let's say two to represent what? Female, okay. So anywhere I pick one, I know that is a male. Anywhere I pick one, I know that's a female. Anytime I pick two, I know that is what? A male, okay. And then I can also go ahead and do the same thing. So within my age group, I can also do that. So anybody who falls within age 18, to 24 I can assign that one a code of one so basically that's what we mean by creating what a code book so I'm going to take you through the process I've already done that for not prolonging this tutorial I'm going to take you through what I've done already how I created my code book so this is my code book over if you can look through this list I've already represented my values the code basically I made two I make this zero you can represent them with anything but when it goes with figures, the higher the figure, you can represent with a higher code, okay? So with a male and female, I don't really care about how I represent the figures, okay? So I'm using zero for, okay, let me use two for this and then I think we can manage it this way. 
So this is how to create the code book. So I have my own. the age. If you fall within 18 to 24, I'll give you one. 28, 25 to 34, I give you two. 35 to 40, I give you three. In that order. If you come down here, are you currently taking part in any gym lesson? So this is going to be yes or no. So I'm saying if you say yes, that means it's one. If you say no, that means zero. Okay, so that's how to create the code book. So let's go through the entire process. And I say, please indicate your current payment method. So assuming the person want to take part in the gym lesson, what mode of payment to be attractive to that person? So in this case, I'm saying cash, Momo, and then bank transfer. So if he's going to pay on cash, that's one. Going to pay with Momo is two. Bank transfer is three. So that's the process of creating the code book. And how many classes do you attend on average? Let's say per week. So that means the person can, if the person is young, the person wants to attend more than one per week, you indicate. So let's say less than two. If less than two, that means the person is maybe a one or even not at all. So if the person is attending less than two, let's see, let's represent that with one. The person is attending two to three, we go with two. Three to four, we go with three. Five to six, we go with four. And above six, we say five, okay? And then we go ahead and say, what? What is your preferred class time? We also want to know the preferred class time. And we have morning, that is 6 to 9. That is, we are seeing if you are following in the early morning, we'll give you what to one, the code will be one. That's the code book that we are talking about. You need to create your code book. Which is basically going to make your entries and analysis very, very simple. So once we are done with our code book, come to the presentation, then you can define your variables, okay? So let's finish with our code book and then we'll look at what next we have to do. Okay, so we have that if it's morning 9 to 11, we give what? 2, evening, we give 3, and if there's any other, we specify, and that is going to be 4. Okay, then we ask, on which days do you prefer to attend classes? Okay, on which days do you prefer to attend classes? I basically going to make some modification to this. The reason being that the person can select more than one. Okay, so I will explain something over here. Once the person can select more than one, we can easily give a different coding for this. Okay. So let me explain how we can do this. We can say zero for not selected. So if the person do not select any of these days, we assume that is zero. If the person selects any, then we say well, when it's one, then we say selected. So I'm going to type this here, and I'll explain everything. Now this will become meaningful when we start doing our entries. Okay, this will become very meaningful when we start doing our entries. So I'll explain this when I start doing my entries. Okay, because we're going to use this same questionnaire for all our entries. Okay. So this is what I'm going to do, and when we come to which class classes do you currently attend, okay? And this part also, I'm going to explain it. We are also going to use the same thing, okay? I'm also going to use the same thing. So how we start between men, you understand this when we start doing our entries, okay? So. We we'll go ahead and say, how satisfied are you with our current group fitness timetable? So this is also a bit of rating. You need to rate and give us what you want. Okay. So you rate us and give us what you want. So current timetable, if you want to rate us with you one to five, so one means not important to be sure somehow. So let's say, somehow okay somehow important so we're going to do that to me somehow important then three means okay four means important and five means what let's say five means very important okay so let's say five means what very important so this is the process of creating your code and we're going to use it in a bit to do our entries. So we want to use the code book to at least complete this set of lists. Uh -huh. 
and they will come to rate the following in terms of importance. So we say time of class if it's important, we're going to rate as between one to five. So many if it's one, you can see that is not important. The two will specify that. Okay, so two may be somewhat important in that order. So you can create your code book in that order. I've completed the code book with a questionnaire that has been answered. And we're going to use the completed questionnaires for that. Okay, so we are done with this. And then the last part is what type of classes would you like to see more? more of on the timetable so these are some classes you may like so the person can also select more than one okay so we can you can equally use this as well you can equally use this as well you sit down here we are going to use that to do this analysis okay so this is how to create the code book and this is what i'm going to use yeah so this let me see this has been answered okay i provide some answers to this and I want us to use this for the entire practical. So we're going to use this to do our entries and our analysis at the same time. So you see, like I said, after creating the code book, the next thing is to define your variables in SPSS. Okay, then you can input your data. And to input your data, we're going to use the data view to do the entries or to input our data. Okay, so to create variables, we need to be at our variable what view and the first one is question one pick okay please take the most important one are you so we want to know whether you're a male or a female and over here i'm just going to say question one and over here realize that the type column so we have the name so even if possible you can even provide an id which we, we assume is going to be uniquely at one here so Okay, so I have it at the top here, sorry. So I've, I've created this, my ID, so I can even set it, since it's an ID, I can set it as numeric. So numeric is basically about figures, okay. So I'll leave it at that option like that. And every other thing is gonna be how, as it is. I'm not gonna change anything. So the most important thing is, uh, let's start with our questions. So our first question, let's say question one. Question one is about either you're a male or female. So when you click down here, you can specify. Okay, we're going to ask your question whether you're a male or a female. I'm going to accept and some figures. I don't, I'll leave it as numeric for now. It will not affect anything. But I don't want anything to be displayed in uh, numeric or in decimal places. Okay, so like I said, I'm going to provide if the person pick one, that means the person is saying what? I'm a female. Let me change this to two. If the person pick one, the person is saying I'm a female. If the person pick two, the person say I'm a male. So down here, I'll change my decimal places to zero. I don't want any decimal. I'll leave every other thing as it is. And we come to the label aspect, which is very important. So the label is what we want to say gender. Okay. So we are creating our variable. So gender and the value, which is very important. This is what we specify. So click on these three dots. When you click on this, click on three dots. And then we come here, the value. So we are saying one. One is called towards female. And we add this and then we'll go and say two is called towards male. And then we add it. We click OK. We are done with that. Okay. So this is all we need to do at this particular part of our question. So we are done question questioning. We've already entered question question one. Okay. So question one, we've entered it neatly. We'll come and answer this. So if you see this, the person have selected female. That means female has been chosen at this part of the question here. So I'll pick female for this. And I've, I'll come back here to do any entries. We'll be at the data view. Okay. So for now, let's go ahead and complete everything. So the next one is question two. So question two. We want to know the age, so this is also going to be age. Let's leave it as numeric and age. We don't want any decimal, so let me just turn the decimal to zero. And we want to say age. Okay, we want to say age. And over here too, we're also going to state our values. We are going to state our values over here. So we click on values and we are going to see one. 
one is one that means the person falls within what 18 to 24 we add one is two and the person falls between 25 to 34 one is three men and the person falls within what 35 to 44 one is four the person falls within 45 to 54 one is five and then the person fall within 55 to 64 one is six the person fall within 65 to 74 and a seven the person is 75 plus okay so this is all we need for this particular question that's question two and i'll just click okay okay so we've at, at least entered two questions we look at how we can create variable like i said variables shouldn't have space between the week i'm just using question question one for now you can go ahead and say maybe each you can type in each as a variable and there's nothing wrong with that okay but we just want to go with this and then we at least give a very nice label for that. So the next one is going to be question three. Question three. And question three, I see, are you currently taking part in any gym lesson? So this is going to be a yes or no answer. So I'm going to leave it as numeric as it is. And I really don't want any decimal place. And I'll go ahead and I'll say taking gym lesson. Let me just see that. And the value is going to be yes or no. So one for yes and zero for no. And add okay. And the next turn is we'll go ahead and then do the race. So I'm assuming you're a beginner. I'm going to take everything step by step for you to understand. So I'll do everything. I'm not going to skip any step. Okay. So the next one is. Let's indicate your current payment method. So I'm also going to leave that as numeric. And even I can use a string as well, but let me just leave it as numeric. It's not going to affect anything. Then we'll go ahead and say mode of payment. Mode of payment. And the values you want to specify. So if the person is using is paying cash, if it's one, that means the person will pay on cash. We'll go and pay with cash and, and we add that. When it's two, that means the person is paying with more. When it's three, when it's three, when it's three, the person is paying with what bank transfer. Okay, so I'm gonna add this. And that's all for question four. Okay, so we'll go ahead with question question five. So we're gonna go ahead with question five. Question five. And we're also gonna leave us numeric as simple as like that. And question five, we are saying how many classes do you attend on average per week? Okay, so we are asking class classes per week so let's just use that as a label and we'll come here and we we'll say if one that means you are 10 two or less when you enter three meaning you enter two meaning you attend class between two to what three per week per week when you give us three meaning you attend between three to four per week when you pick four, meaning you are 10 between five to six per week, and give us six and greater, meaning you are 10, or sorry, when you give us five, meaning you are 10, six or more per week. So we add that and go to OK. So we'll go to question six. So question six is about what is your preferred class time? So Question six. Question six. 
But let's see. I really don't like the decimal Okay. So class pay with class time. So let's see class time for the label. Okay. Class time. And we are seeing if you give us one. Meaning that any class early morning. Okay. Early morning. So that means six to I'm just make it six to nine a.m. Okay, so we'll leave it as it is for the sake of time. And if you give us two million morning do but not too early, and that is nine to eleven a.m. You give us three. And you are doing the evening. Evening that is six to eight PM. Six to eight PM. And the last one is when you give us four well it's miss all this. Okay. So all that. And I'll click OK. So we have answered question five, question six, and then we're going to Question seven. So question seven is going to be our main challenge now. So question seven, we are saying, let's say we are saying, on which day do you prefer to attend class? So which days is plural? So the person may get, the person may provide more than a day. So in this case, we have to do a bit of analysis over here, and we can assume this to be a. Question seven A, question seven B, question seven C in our order. So you can see this be, this should be question seven A. So that's what we are going to do. But I'm not going to type it, but I will explain it. So it's question seven A. So this is going to be question seven A. Let's understand this. This is very, very important. So the person, because the person can select, you see the answers are provided. The person selecting Thursday and then Tuesday. Okay, Tuesday and Thursday. So meaning the person can select more than two. That's why we say days. So in this case, we cannot just provide one, two, three, and the person, if we do it that way, that means the person can only select one option. But in this case, we don't want the person to select more than the quest, uh, one option. The person should be able to select multiple. So that's why we need to do some analysis over here. We need to do some breakdown over here. So I'm going to say question one, a that's for the Monday. So we'll look at how this is going to be. This is how this is going to be. And I'll say what? days of attending class let me just leave it as it is days of attending class and over here i'm going to do it if the person pick one one means selected that means the person selected monday that's it if the person picks the that means the person not select monday so this is at least straightforward. So I'm done with Monday. So look at how this is going to be. So the seven question seven A is for Monday. I have to do the same thing for question seven B, which is going to be Tuesday. So this is a bit of technical, but once you get the concept, it's really going to help you a lot. Okay, so let's do that for Tuesday. So we can just copy this because they are all talking about the same lesson. I'll just copy paste. Okay, and I'm just going to copy the same thing and then paste it down here. But I don't waste so much time. Okay, so question. So basically, I'm going to do a lazy web now. I'll just be doing copy and paste, but I'm just repeating the same thing for all. So this is a variable and then Q7C. So this is going to be for Wednesday, right? Okay, so with my decimal, maybe I may feel lazy and start moving the decimal. But let's go and then do the rest. I'll paste this here. I'll paste this here. Copy and paste. Okay, let's copy and paste. I'll come down here. So I'm going to Wednesday. Okay, Wednesday is question seven. But it's going to question seven T, right? Okay, this is going to question seven T. And 
go ahead copy this paste it here because it basically asking them the same thing whether it has been selected is one not selected is zero so that is what i'm doing i don't want to be repeating the same thing i'll just copy and paste q7 e right here and it's basically going to be very good go ahead and we just copy paste copy paste so there's a full lesson we have taken on spss and remember you need to relax and then watch this tutorial today and remember to subscribe and don't forget to turn on the notification bell in order to get updates anytime we upload a new content so this is going to be a, very, a bit of a long tutorial and just stay tuned and we'll be done in a bit so i'm done with wednesday so the a is for monday b for tuesday c is for wednesday d is for thursday and e friday so we need what saturday and then sunday so q 7 f and this is going to be the same process same process and okay just copy so we're going to do the last one which is for saturday doing the last one for saturday which is going to be each right okay so this is going to be g right so this will be g so this is going to be g and then we can easily change i'm even wasting my time so i can easily change the zero from here and just copy paste copy paste so basically i have seven days one two three four five six seven so we are done with question what we are done with question eight we are done with question eight and we are now going to question sorry we are done with question seven we are now going to question eight so question eight is going to, also going to follow the same procedure so this is something that you need, basically need to have your time and then work with it okay so question we are also going to have question eight e in that order okay we're going to have question eight e in that order so let's follow the same procedure and then do it for that one as well so we can go ahead and do our analysis so that means if the person pick e question it e, that means the person prefer body pump okay the person pick let's see question e d that means the person prefer yoga so that is what we are doing now okay, so i'm going with b and just following the procedure so question a we are not going to use the same thing okay question eight is going to be a different question which class do you currently attend so let's say current currently attending so that's what we actually want to do but not selected and selected is also going to be the same okay so let's go ahead and finish up with this so we're going to have question c a c question a c question a c and this video is a bit long but it's worth it okay so you actually actually going to know every techniques every technicalities you will need to start analyzing your own data once you carry out or you perform the questionnaire so anyone pick e d means the person is referring towards yoga okay. person referring to yoga lesson okay so let's just go ahead and finish up with this so I'm taking you through the entire process. So 
So I'm going to repeat everything. I'm going to repeat everything for you and I'll be back with question 9 very soon. So stay tuned, let me finish up with this and then I'll be back and we'll continue with that. But it's basically going to be the same thing and I don't need to be repeating it for you to waste your time. So I'm going to speed up the video over here and I'll be back. Come back to review our questions and there's something we left out that needs to be done. Okay, we're actually doing copy and paste, and then I believe we're actually enjoying it. So let's do some quick review on this, okay, so that everything will be more explanatory. Okay, so question seven, question seven. So over here, we actually need to provide the day. So this is Monday, okay. So we know we're going to have Monday. The value, okay. We're going to have Monday. And this is going to be Tuesday. At least we can easily get this concept working for us. Okay, so let's do it this way, and everything should be meaningful from here. Here will be Friday. This place will be Saturday, and then Sunday. Then question eight, let's do the same thing. So the first one is body pump. Body pump. The next one is going to pilot. The next one is going to be body step. Then we're going to have yoga. Okay. We have Body balance. The balance is supposed to be one L. We have free. When we have free style, spinning. Okay. We're going to have body attack. And we have free style. Step. Okay. We have gentle exercise. We have power hour. We're going to have boxing. We're having outdoor outdoor training. And the last one over here is going to be basic. Training. So actually, this is what we left out, and there is every other thing is going to be the same. So question nine, let's proceed with question nine. And at least since we've managed to correct this concept, what we left out, we can easily go ahead and then have a perfect start to question nine. Okay. So question nine, we are going to follow the same procedure, and the first one is current timetable. So let's go with the current timetable. So this should be question. Nine. Let's see. Let me question nine a in that order. And question nine a is current timetable. Current timetable. So let's take note of this particular one because we want the person to select to read between one to what five. So when it comes to the value call, we are not going to do not selected and selected again. We are actually going to use another method. So we're going to say if the person pick one, that means what dissatisfied. Okay. So this is actually the strategy we are using over here. Okay. When the person give us two, meaning the person is somehow satisfied. Okay. Person give us three, meaning the person is okay. And the person give us four, the person is satisfied. Okay. The person give us five, then we are happy. The person is very satisfied. Okay. So this is actually what we want to do. 
So we are done with this. So this is the rating the person is going to give us. So I'm just going to click on OK and we are good to go. So we can just do the rest in that order. So we can have Q, 9, A. So let's say the number 2 will be our B. And we're just putting 0 there. And then we have the current term. So this is going to be variety of classes. So I believe we now have the concept. So we now the options are the same. So we can still copy and paste like that. Okay. So question 9C. So this is going to be availability. So this is going to be availability of class time. Class time. Okay. And like I said, the copying and pasting is actually going to be the same. Question 9D. This is going to be at most at first slash cleanliness of facility okay and we basically want to paste question 9 so this is going to be e. okay so this is going to be e. and this is going to be number of classes Question 9F. This is going to be ability and effectiveness of instructors. Okay. Paste this as label. 9. So this is going to be G and this, the next one is going to be, it's going to be equipment provided, okay. Q9, H right and this is going to be effectiveness of classes to achieve desired effective. Okay, so it's going to be effectiveness of classes to achieve desired fitness goal. So this is also to achieve desired fitness goals and proceed to question 9 okay so that's the last one for question 9 okay so that's the last one for question at least we need to save this so that we don't lose the entire data let's see sample question I'm going to save this in my document at least saving this i've saved this down and let's continue with question 10. so basically question 10 is actually going to be the same process for question 9 okay question 10 is going to be the same process for question 9 so i'm going to just do that and then i'll be back in a moment okay so stay tuned i'll be back and i should be done with that Okay, so there's a bit of change at question 10, which I have to explain. Okay, so question 10, we look at the process. We have the same 5 to 10, but the kind of answers the person is supposed to provide is going to be different. Okay, so there's going to be one not important to show somehow. So two is going to be somehow important. Okay, so somehow important 
okay important and then what extremely important so we need to do some few changes to this so we can just select our questions and then do modification so i select the first one and then the one is going to be not important okay and i'll just change i'll go to two two will be somehow important okay so i have the somehow over there already so i'll just type important i think for the sake of this we need to go through the process and you can see how you can update the okay is still the same for this but here instead of satisfy it's going to be what's important important and i'll just change the last one is five is what instead of very satisfied what's extremely extremely important so i'll just change this and click on okay Okay, so I'm done with that and I can now copy it and then do the same for the rest. So I'm done with types of class. I need to go to what? Type of time of class and then I need to we have type of class. So I'll just paste the same thing for the time type of class. So I'll just go ahead and finish the rest. Finish the rest. So this is going to be C. So this is going to be C, and this is going to be varieties of class query. Okay. Of class classes. Okay. So I'll paste this Q ten D. And this is going to be number of classes per week. So this tutorial can help anyone. It could be a student, your final exams at school, you've done your thesis or you've done your project work and you've taken some sample questionnaires. You can easily use this process to analyze everything, conclude, draw a report and everything. I'm going to show you after entering this data how you can actually generate your reports, your graph and everything. We are going to do that. Okay, at least we're going to provide at least 10 answers to this question is and then we can go ahead and then at least draw our charts and some frequency distribution we're going to do that and at male to female ratio we can easily check that within this tutorial remember to stay tuned and so i'm going to question 10 e Then E is instructor. Question ten F Equipment provided. We have we have the last one which is what facility so we've come far and we've been able to finish question 10 our last set of question we're going to answer is the question 11 and then we are done and then we can go ahead jump straight to our analysis Oh, thank you. Well, let me thank you so much for watching this tutorial to this stage. Let me congratulate you on that. And I believe you're going to watch it to the end and I have very nice insights. Have fair knowledge about how to analyze data using what? SPSS. So, so we are creating our variables now. So per our presentation, we said define variables in SPSS. So that's what we are doing. What we are doing is defining variables. We've not yet started entering input data. We've not started putting inputting data yet. So we're going to learn how our last stage how to input our data into our cells. Okay. So let's finish the last one. That is question eleven. And it's so amazing. We finally got into this stage. Okay. So this is also going to follow the same procedure. Okay. 
we're gonna follow the same procedure so this is going to be a and this time around we say what type of classes would you like to see more more of on the timetable so we are just on a suggestion what more do they want to see in terms of classes so the first one is pump okay body pump so in this case it's going to be selected not selected so we can go ahead and then pick any of selected we can just copy and then come down here and do our pasting okay so that is straightforward question q11 question that's question 11 b so this is going to be body step so the person pick body step will be able to determine that question 11 c Eleven still use a body balance. Data analysis is actually a process and it's a bit of work, but because you need to get a great data, you need to have time, relax, and then go through an entire process. You can't rush the process and then get a great data. So basically, you need to have time and then do that. So body balance, body attack. Sorry, we've done body balance already. So body attack. Paste this. Question 11 E. Question 11 E will be freestyle step. Basically, I'm just going to complete just this side. I will leave this side out because of the sake of time. My video is becoming too long. So I'm just going to complete just this side. And I'm going to leave the rest out. Okay. So this is freestyle step. So let me add it. So here will be power hour. Please question 11. So this is going to be boxing. It's eleven age. Okay, basic training. should be our last one on the list i'm not going to do the rest the process is basically going to be the same so a b s express so i'm going to leave it here as my last entry so we've been able to do our entries now using our variables view so we've done the entries through our variable view any questionnaire any answers are going to provide that's the values the data view we'll use the data. okay so now we're going to at least Get about 10 records solutions to all of the respond to our questionnaires and then we'll enter this and see how this is going to look like we're going to use the same questionnaire over here because this is what we use and then to do that we need to go to our data view and you can see that everything we provided is showing up over here our questions okay so you can see the id here you can see the id column at the top see our ID so you can see ID of and then the first question so the first first question now we say if we give one that means we are saying what the person is what a female right so we give one and then the second question so what is going to happen is that every row over here is for it's a record for one person okay the row is a record for one person the column 
is basically for multiples okay create a column that will take a variety of data okay so column one over here is for one person so the first person we are picking is the id of one the question one the person is a female and question two we are saying what is your age so we see if the person pick 18 to 24 that means the person pick one that means the person fall within 18 to 24 so i'm going to pick just one one and question question three we are saying are you currently taking part in any gym lesson so if the person pick one that means the person says yes question four please indicate your current payment mode so if the person put in two that means the person is going to pay with more more so question five So question five, how many classes do you attend on average per week? So if a person is attending two, the person picked two, that means the person is attending within two to three. So let's say two, question is five. So we go to question five. So let's go over the question again. Seems I've skipped some. So question one, this is our question one. So if you pick one, that means you have a female. Question two, question two, you pick one, that means you are age between 18 to 24. Question three, if you pick one, that means you are saying, well, yes. Question four, two means Mumu. So we are going to question five. Okay, so we are on the right course. So with how many classes do you attend on average per week? So let's say the person said three. That means the person is attending between three to four classes per week. Question six, if the person pick two, that means the person prefer what? Morning to what? Morning, which is nine to ten. Let me just explain something. You can easily look at the components, what you've assigned to this value. So we have what we have. If you move your cursor to the icons at the top, we have value labels. So you want to see what exactly, you want to display the female. So one we mentioned that when you pick one, you are referring to a female. If you want to see that, you can easily switch this, okay, between the figure to the label, okay, so value label. So you can easily switch the value to a label and see. So when you click on the value to the label, you can see our one automatically is now what? Female. Question two is between 18 to this. And the person says yes to gym lesson. The person is going to pay through Momo. And the person, question one, the person is following with him, is attending class three to four per week. And the person prefer morning and the time and everything is there okay so basically you can easily switch and see what is going there but let me just switch back and then finish with my entries okay okay so we are not done with the question seven so question seven question seven we are saying on which days do you prefer attending classes so let's say this person is saying tuesday and the thursday you understand why provided those answers so tuesday so 7a is for monday so let's see if the person select one the person select one and the person type in zero for the rest so the person did not pick zero let me just switch back and then explain something so a is for monday a is for monday so the person select monday the person will not attend on tuesday so you can double click in and say not selected. If you want to do the entry this way, you can also do that. So Wednesday, which is our Q, our question 7D, the person is also attending, so selected. And then the rest like this. So when you switch to value to label, you can easily get this drop down that you can pick from. So the person, the rest of the days, the person did not actually attend. So the person will attend Monday and the what? Thursday, okay? So let me just also do the persons pick this and this. So this is going to be not selected. This place also not selected and also not selected. So the person is only attending twice a week. So we are done with question what? Seven. We'll go to question eight. Question eight is also going to be the same process. Okay. So I've switched this value so I can easily pick. So the first thing is body pump. If the person prefer body pump, the person is on body pump as a gym lesson, you can pick selected, can select that. 
if the person is not on it just go not selected so what i'm going to do is that i'm just going to do random selections and we can do our analysis okay let me do my random selection so you can follow the questionnaire so maybe you printed out these questionnaires to people they provided the answers so you can follow that to do your selections okay so we just want to just do for some few people and so we have a lot of questions to re respond to so this question 9 we are done with question 8 question 9 and this is where we have another amazing way to provide this answer so we see that we are saying between 5 to what 1 to 5 so if the person is satisfied with the time of class the person can just be very satisfied if the person is not satisfied with type of class the person can say maybe some are satisfied and in that order. so I'm going to also just pick some random figures here for this so that we can see the analysis you can take your time if it's maybe a well structured questionnaire you've taken for data then maybe you have to respond according to what people provided okay so we are done with question question 9 question 10 is also almost the same so i'm going to pick some random figures So question 11 is here and then we're going to finish up with question 11 and then at least <laughs> it seems our lesson is becoming very long i just want to provide solution to few of that at least for our analysis okay let's see So we've actually provided a record for the first person. Provide a record for the first person. So let's see the next one. Let's say the person is a male, and then fall within the age range. Let's just put it there, so that at least. So I many the person is not in gym lesson, so there's no way a person is going to be anything. So this is something we should have updated in our lesson. Okay. So if the person is not on any gym lesson, we could have skipped. The rest of this question we don't need to provide them okay so for the sake of this let me just pick in different other things but we will in our subsequent lesson we we'll try to pick maybe a raw questionnaire and then we can do some analysis if the person do not is done on any gym lesson then the person is not supposed to provide any more details any mode of transfer okay so this is something we need to take note of and the person is not supposed to provide time for a lesson because the person is not on any lesson but I want to use this because we've not taken note of that during our questionnaire so we actually have that challenge in this tutorial okay I think we just need five of these let's randomly answer five of this and we are good to go So I'm able to provide five questionnaires. I've administered five questionnaires and I've provided the answers. So I'm going to use this to at least generate our reports, draw our analysis or create our analysis. So we're going to use this to do that. Okay. So even before that, if I go to my presentation, I want to give credit to www.spsstutorial.com for the content of this particular presentation i got most of my information from there except that some of this image was captured through my own analysis using my spss so i will give them a lot of credit for that beginning of my tutorial i've also made mention of two main windows within spss we have the data editor and then output viewer so we are not going to have a look at or a feel of the out the output viewer if i talk about the data editor the data editor basically means the variable view and then the data view so this is where we can do editing to our data okay 
So this is our data editor, but the output view, that is where after our analysis, we're going to get that particular uh, report, okay? We're going to get our response at the output view. So I'm going now going to just give you a full screen and then we can all do our analysis. So we've entered a lot, as you can see. If I go back to my data view, this is the data we are going to use to do our short analysis. So let's jump right into this and see how this is going to work for us. So we can switch between, like I said, we can easily switch between values and the labels here. So the figures have entered the drop down. You realize that they are all being represented by figures, okay? They are just figures. So now that we have our record, we can go ahead and do some bit of analysis, okay? We can analyze this data in several ways. So the first thing we can do is to even go to the analyze and then we can go to descriptive statistics. And then within that, we can even find frequency. So we can click on frequencies and within the frequency, you can specify what you want to calculate frequency for. So we can do frequency for gender and then that of age as well. So we can select, when you select gender and you just add it to the variable option, you can also click age and then we add it. If you want to go and then also pick some of the lessons and then duration for those things, you can add whatever frequency you want. We have other things. Once you add these figures, you can go ahead, statistics, and then uh, we can find the main, median, and then we have maximum, and then the rest. So whatever you want to calculate from here, you can just add it. We also have the chart. If you want to display any of the charts, pie chart, you can specify that from here. Okay. So once I've added gender and then the age, I can go ahead and click OK. And this is going to give me the output summary. Okay. So this is basically what we have now. You see, we have gender, age. So basically, we have the valid for the gender. So at least we have five questionnaires that we've administered. Nothing is missing. We have the mean, we have the median, maximum, and then we have the minimum. We also have the gender part. Okay, this is a statistic, the total statistic. Then we have the frequency table. At the frequency table, we have females. The, the female, we have only two, and then the male, we have three, which sum up to five in total. So we've been able to do that calculation. We look at the percentage and then the valid percentage. The difference is that the percentage over here contains missing values and others. But the valid percentage is minus the missing value. So if there's any missing value, in the percentage column, it will be added. But the valid one, the missing values will be subtracted from that. So if you check over here, the, the status, we don't have any missing value. Okay, That is why the percentage and the valid percentage over here are almost the same. Then we have the cumulative percentage. Since there's no missing value, we expect our total to be 100%. We come to age distribution as well. We know that per our questionnaires, we have total questionnaire administered. And the age group, we have at least two people falling within 35 to 44. And then we have the percentages here, valid percentage and then cumulative percentage. I've already explained the valid percentage and then the cumulative percentage. If we come down here, we actually specify a pie chart. So this is a pie chart distribution of our values, okay? So we have the gender here, we have male and the female. The red indicates male. So that means we have more male responding to this questionnaire than what we have for females. We come the age distribution so you can see that from our chart. Okay, we see the figures representing the age, the colors and everything indicating that. So we've been able to create a chart to analyze this. We have several other things you can do over here. If you go to the graph, we went to analysis to do that, okay? If you go to chat, under chat, you have legacy dialogues. Under legacy, you can go ahead and then come to histogram. Intend to draw histogram. You can click on histogram and maybe the histogram we want for gender. You can just do that and, and you can go ahead and click OK. There are several things you can do and once you have your data, you can play with it. So this is a bit of age distribution I have over here and just a nice graph for that. I will not save this. If you go back to analysis frequency, we have the descriptive statistics. You can do that. If I go to descriptive statistics, I can pick some figures and just go ahead and then populate it as well. So just try a few hands on this. We have, if you go to the analysis, I have tables. You can create tables, custom tables. You can do the compare means. You can find independent sample and then the rest. So there are several other things you can do. I have said using the 
using SPSS. So you can add your values and if you come here, statuses, you have, I mean, you can find the mode, the sum, the maximum, standard deviation, the variance, the range. You can check all that if indeed you maybe want to calculate that. We also have the charts. So I'll pick pie chart for the other one. If I want to draw a histogram or pie chart, I can do that. So I'll draw this, I'll go back and then we have the format and other things. I send how the things are going to be displayed. We have okay, so let's use we have the chart. We're not going to use the histogram and see how the histogram is going to look. Just click OK and we're equally going to get our analysis again. As you can see, we have this the basic chart. We've added more figures, standard deviation variance, and the others, the age. The gender, the age, and every other thing is the same. But this one, we are using the histogram to do that. The histogram for the gender, we have that of what? The age as well. We have the age range, we have that. I'm going to do the last one, then I'm going to end this tutorial. And leave your comment at the comment section. If there's anything you want me to upgrade on, or anything you want me to create video on, I'll be ready to do that. So the last thing I'm going to do is I'll go back the frequency and then the chart. I'm going to pick a by chart. A bar chart, okay. Picking a bar chart, we can pick instead of frequency, you can pick percentage and go to OK and click on that. So let's see how this is going to look like. So we have everything over here, as you can see. You come down here, and then we now have what a bar chart, okay. So the bar chart displaying the ages, you can see the age those falling within 18 to uh, 24, 25 to 34. So we have twice as 35 to 44 compared to the other. So the more you administer questionnaire, more response you get for a questionnaire, the more complex data you have to analyze. So for now, this is what I have for you. Remember to subscribe to my channel and don't forget to turn on the notification bell in order to get updates anytime we upload a new content. So till I come away, remember to subscribe and share this video with friends. Bye bye.